Welcome back to the liberation of the nest of evil. Uh, and um, evil certainly is this guy. Turns so evilly annoying. Oh, down! Why won't you crip with that? Uh, anyway, thankfully though, for some reason, um, if you look at him there, he doesn't have a movement rate listed. Um, so I'm guessing that somehow holding that swarm tone means that he uh, can't move. Funnily enough, that was um, a big bullion. The next chest, on the other hand, dramatic fanfare, and we get the Libra shard. Funnily enough, my star sign, uh, though it's um, why they have to make it so that my star sign gives possibly the most useless boost of all of them. Then again, that plus two luck equates to an extra one percent of evasion, which I guess could mean all the difference sometimes. I don't know. I mean, I haven't really been a fan of luck. Unless your luck is really high, it usually doesn't affect anything. Right, now I need to heal Sirius, because he's going to have to be a reinforcement block. But, uh, Catria and Bast are going to have to hold the fort for the moment here. Mostly Bast, because I get the feeling Archers are going to show up as reinforcements, and that won't be good if, Cat if they spawn near Catria. Um... Right now, Ogma and Sheeta will head towards this door, and you can probably tell why. Uh, but first, Linda's going to get over there with her door key. Uh, yes. Like I was saying, for some reason, Swarm seems to cut your movement to zero in this game. Oh crap, he's going for Mark. Uh, if you could have evaded that Swarm, that would have been nice. Oh great, he's healing him, that's bad. Come on, would a, would a crit be too much to ask? Oh wait, no, no, I'll kill him anyway, that's fine. But, uh, crit anyway, that would be nice. <laughs> okay, so you don't crit with a 26% killer bow, but you crit with a 6% steel bow. <laughs> what? Ryan, what the... <laughs> I don't have anything to say to that, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> what is this? What is this playthrough? What is it with making me crit with low percent? I mean... I can't complain, but... <laughs> why that not the killer bow? Ugh... Oh. I may as well not be using the killer bow at all, it's as if steel bow gives me the same... Anyway, okay, before I go hysterical, I better stop that. Um, basically, okay, reinforcements didn't show up last turn, but they will show up now. And I've got to keep Katria back, because I learned the hard way that there is an archer among them, and if he spawns and he's in her range, bang, bye-bye Katria. Yeah, as awesome as she is, she can't handle arrows, at least not now. Uh, in fact, funnily enough, um, in the original mystery, uh, we would have got the IoT shields uh, back in Chapter 3. That is not here anymore. Um, you get the IoT shield now, it's still in this game, but you don't get it until much, much later. And I kind of, I kind of agree with that, giving it to you a bit later, only because, um, come on! The White Wings were already broken as it was in the original mystery. I mean, you know, and then you go and give them a kryptonite remover that early. Ha! <laughs> uh, I love it when things do no damage. Anyway. Right, now we can finally take down this guy. Sadly, his physics staff is not droppable, but that secret book is, and oh, not another crit. But anyway, he'll be dead soon anyway. For some reason, his AI is not smart enough to simply move one space backwards, and wow, nice level up there, Ryan. Yeah, what did I tell you? Ryan is getting good. He's getting really good. Anyway, um, I was talking about Swarm um, not being, um, cutting your movement. Funnily enough, in Fireball 4, um, enemies that carried long-range tones, the tone itself had a passive effect of cutting the user's movement to zero. Um, which I uh, found kind of funny, but you could never even get those tomes in that game, so, um, yeah. You can't get Swarm in this game either, so for all I know, it might actually cut your movement to zero, but... Right, now, uh, Bast needs to... I'm gonna have him equip the Hand Axe, just so he can counter... You miss with Weapon Triangle event. Well, he missed too. No, well, at least I didn't miss again, and that would have been embarrassing. Unfortunately, uh, we can, there's no archer yet, but um, there'll probably be more soon. And because of that, I'm going to make use of this tactic I like to call shifting the line. I'll tell you what that means when I actually start doing it. First, Marp and Julian had to go up that end just to um, open that door. Uh, Freya and Norn are just going to sit there uh, chatting. Um, high reinforcements. 
Yeah, you're all soldiers, and you've all got javelins. Enough said. Oh, come on, hit, please! There again, hand actors were never known for their high hit rates. And two, there we go. And they seem to be a little weak in this game, I don't know why. No, oh, Shane Sirius has never javelin. I noticed someone in the comments actually did suggest giving him a javelin before, but I haven't thought to uh, um, at this point. Right, now I can kill this guy. Uh, just a regular iron bow will do it. And no more healing! And I can get my uh, revenge by proxy on that um, bishop in the last chapter. I hate that guy so much. Although, um, my guys up there are kind of hurt a bit, and Militia needs to be down here dealing with reinforcements. What I'm going to do here is have Catria kill this guy, and then I'm going to shift the line. Uh, what I mean by shift the line is... Uh, first I will heal fast. I'm running out of healing staffs, but I've got some more in storage, that's fine. Uh, right, now, and we slowly move my two combat characters forward. So as you can see here, Bath and Sirius are a little further forward than they were before. Don't do that, otherwise a line to Catria will be available. Bath and Sirius are a little further forward than they were before. Now, every time I kill a new wave of reinforcements, I make them step forward again a little bit more. And next time they step forward a little bit more. And again, now, um, but first, I have opened the castle, and here is Narval, and there is an Elfire Mage. Fortunately, he can't reach us with, the, with his door closed. And here is a whole pack of armors, a couple of Elfire Bishops, and, um, the man himself. Oh, uh, he's got a, a Cancer Shard, which boosts his defense by two. But his stats actually are that great overall, really. Uh, but now, our uh, thing is, yep. Yeah, now Narval is here, but Sheeta is in position to talk to him right from the start. Instead, though, I'm going to have Ozma speak to him now. Now, we want to recruit him right now, because that killing edge is going to leave a mark. Plus, we want that Aquarius shard he has. Uh, you, can't, you can intimidate us all you like, but you know you're getting on our side. Come on, you always join us. Come on, you know you want to. You know you want to. You're awesome. Come on, get on our side. What? 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 Wait a minute, I thought you were Narval. Wait, what is this? You might remember Santo as that random name that got dropped by a village in the previous chapter. Yes, this is not Narval. It's an imposter. And in fact, Narval's ending back in Shadow Dragon foreshadowed this. So, yeah, we're not actually getting the real deal this time. Um, but this however, is some very significant backstory for Ogma. Yep. Ogma was a gladiator back in Norda. You might remember Norda as the place where Katarina had an abusive childhood, and the place where Linda was possibly almost sold into slavery. That place! It's also right outside Arcania's doorstep. Why did... didn't anybody do anything about that place? Seriously, it's ridiculous! Why did they let that kind of stuff go on right outside their doorstep? Like, oh, come on, this is just ridiculous. Anyway, um... Fortunately, though, um, Santo owes Ogma his life, and so he's gonna join us. However, he can be recruited two ways, with Ogma or with Sheeta. I'm gonna go back and show you what, it, what happens if you recruit him with Sheeta. So here we are back again. I loaded a save state there. I usually don't use save states, I just mainly use them for recording purposes. So basically, yep, yeah, uh, here's the uh, alternate version. Now, this time we actually know he's an imposter, so this is going to lose a bit of its impact. Um, now, I mostly did it for this line. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's going to say it. it's pretty obvious from that. Sheeta is instantly able to tell he's not the real deal. <laughs> Yeah, he pretty much blew his cover there. Speaking of blowing your cover, Santo suffers from something kind of weird. Um, in the original, the disguise was a lot more effective because they wore the same colours. Now that Narval wears a red shirt and Santo still wears purple like in the original history, the disguise is a bit weird, unless Santo was somehow wearing an extra shirt on top of his current shirt. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Oh, I should probably talk about Santo now, right? Santo, well, uh, hmm. Well, you know what they say, an imitation can't beat the original. In this case, that could not be more true. Yeah. Sorry, Santo, but you're not very good. 
He's trying to pass himself off as Narval so he can get hired. I'm sorry to say, but that's pretty much the only way he's ever getting hired, because with Bruce like that, eh, yeah. Samto is the first Miramizan we'll be getting, sadly. And as you can tell, he's pretty mediocre. He's got amazing speed, but the rest of his stats suck, to put it bluntly. And his bases aren't all that great either. And, well, I mean, his HP is decent, but... And he starts with a killing edge, but... Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, there's really nothing more positive I can say about him. I mean, I think he's an amusing character and all, uh, and um, apparently he's got some... Um, pretty amusing conversations with the female my unit, but again, gameplay wise, I don't have much to say about him other than that he's not very good. Seriously, if you want to use someone, wait for the original. I don't want to spoil anything, but he's actually not that far off, and he totally blows this guy out of the water. So, yeah. Samto, sorry mate, but um, yeah, you're the real Narvo, get the hell out of my army. Well, we need to recruit him for the Aquarius shot anyway. Uh, yeah. Yeah, shame about that, but Samso, you kinda suck. I guess I've said that a lot, so I should just stop. You know what they say, if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. So, regarding Samso, I have this to say. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I always wanted to do that. Uh, anyway, right, um, whoa, more reinforcements. Armored guys are back. I really hope Bart can take these guys, and oh, he doesn't have his, um, hand axe. I was about to say javelin there, and whoa, crap, this is bad. Okay, Bart, if you crit, okay, he didn't. If he critted and killed that guy, he'd fall victim to the same thing Mary Sue did. Too much crit will kill you, as I like to call it, and he's still getting speed. I mean, not that I can complain, that's pretty amazing. Alright, everyone, stacks on serious. You're gonna do nothing. Alright, who wants to try serious next? Okay, come on, I dare you. Oh, yeah, he's just leveled up, so, yeah, all the more good luck to you. You're gonna need it. Seriously, good luck to you. Nope, failed. Is there no one else? Didn't think so. Anyway, right. We've got two save points here, uh, we might as well hit this one now. The second we'll save for when we actually get into the throne room itself. Now, since I've pretty much run out of things to talk about until we get to the big fight in the throne room, I thought I'd take a, a little bit to talk about Lang's backstory, which isn't really elaborated on very much in the game itself. Uh, it's something that only came up in the designer's notes. Ah, uh, okay, basically, I've got the page up here. Okay, basically, uh, the Kingdom Arca of Arcania was comprised of five noble families, led by, uh, okay, firstly, the Marquis of Deal, Sharon, who is Midia's father, uh, you might remember Midia from Shadow Dragon, the Marquis of Left Handed, Carter, the Marquis of Adria, Lang, so yes, this is Lang, the Marquis of Nenadi, Noah, who is George's father, yes, George is nobility. Uh, the game doesn't really hint that at it very much, uh, but I'm sure it comes up in the support eventually. But yeah, he's descended from a noble family, although he doesn't like the life of aristocracy and likes to travel around, so uh, the developers have joked that maybe his personality is a bit like Levin, although eh, he's kind of different from Levin in a lot of ways. And the fifth one was, surprisingly enough, the Marquis of Samsu, um, who is apparently named Bent, which is a bit of a strange name. But what most intrigues me is that apparently Samsuth was actually a noble house of Arcania. The only mention, of course, you get in, um, of Samsuth in Shadow Dragon is when you pass through the mountain range and it's all inhabited by bandits. But apparently it's actually a territory of Arcania and used to be led by a noble house. So what happened there, I'm really not sure. But anyway, at the beginning of the War of Shadows, Lang and Bent betrayed the Arcadian royal family to Doluna. Yes, Lang actually sold out Arcania to Doluna. Um, I, I don't believe they brought that up back when we first saw him, but, um, yeah, why he wasn't arrested for that, or why he wasn't punished for that at all, well, wow, I mean, I guess we'll find out later. 
Um, Kartas was apparently caught in the confusion and was unable to send soldiers to protect Arcania. Sharon and Noah were the only ones who fought back, but they both got killed by the traitors, leaving both Midia and George fatherless. Interestingly enough, that actually means that uh, George may well be working for the guy who killed his father. Um, then again, uh, it's, if, if that's the case, I don't think George knows, because if he was, he certainly would be a lot less reluctant to backstab him uh, than he currently is. Anyway, so Sharon and Noah are both dead, and um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, Lang, of course, uh, apparently, um, he just kind of got ignored during um, the events of Shadow Dragon. I don't know where he was, uh, and now he's only shown up now um, to terrorize Bruce. Um, but the one that most intrigues me is the Marquis of Samsu, Vince. We don't know anything else about him other than the fact that he was a traitor. After that betrayal, nothing has ever heard of him, and I don't believe his name is even mentioned. In fact, I don't think Shadow Dragon even vaguely alludes to the fact that Samsu used to be a province of Arcania. And how it got became a nest for bandits, I really don't know. And what happened to the Marquis, I'm again I'm not sure. So the developers haven't really revealed any information on that fact, um, and then again, it doesn't really sound like that important, so, um, anyway, right, uh, back to this game, and, um, Ryan just dodged an Elpha, I actually had to have him dodge that, um, because if he didn't, things would be very bad, um, he would have had to survive the attack for him now, and, yeah, that wouldn't have ended well, someone would die. Now, good thing Marv has some extra vulnerabilities on hand, right. Yeah, I still can't stop... Uh, I'm just wondering what, what must have happened to the Marcus of Samsung. I don't know. Fanfic fuel, perhaps? Anyway. But it's Lang we're interested in now, and it's finally time to invade the throne room. This, I'm pretty sure the reinforcements are gone. This was very intense. I had to restart quite a few times, because, um... If only Linda had more uses left on her um, Nosferatu, I'd be able to use her as a tank. But as it stands, I can't, really. And Ogma can't really tank those armors. He'd normally be able to if it weren't for those Elfire Bishops. Those Elfire Bishops are really dangerous. Really dangerous. They'll knock half the HP off just about anyone. And this is why, um, of course I saved here. I needed to reload this save quite a few times, actually. There's a bit of a difficulty spike here. Yeah, on anything above normal, you have to be really careful here. And I mean really careful. Um, the armor guys don't seem to want to move for Ogma, but they certainly will move for Linda, so, um, yeah, gotta watch out for that. Uh, I'm trying to lure a javelin guy to her. Right, so here they come. Yeah, this is tricky, uh, and, um, I needed careful planning and an awful lot of luck to survive this. Uh, uh, yes, I'm sorry, I will admit that luck did play quite a big role in me. Oh, damn it. Oh, well, he got some good mobiles before. Right, this is what I was counting on, actually. Um, though, um, unfortunately, there is a second javelin guy who will be quite... Ah, great. You know what? Maybe I should have equipped Aura there, just to get an extra kill. Oh, fortunately, Martha was the second javelin guy. That's good. Now, I would really like Militia to be up there. Right, now, this, this here, this is the, the difficult thing. This would be really easy if it weren't for those guys. Seriously, if it weren't for them, yeah, this is looking really bad for that side. I've got to break through these guys really quickly. And I mean really, really quickly. Um, yeah, Ogma won't hold up much longer. And this is bad. This is very bad. Um, again, if it weren't for those bishops, things would be fine. But Elfire is actually quite nasty. It hurts an awful lot, and... Again, it'll pretty much knock off half the HP of any physical user it hits. Um, right, let's see if I can... Yes, now, I mentioned before the Wing Spear is effective against armored units. That's really going to come into play here. Uh, now, hopefully, I can get a lucky crit and kill this guy in one. Yep, there we go, good. I don't have to weather an attack from Elfire. That is excellent. I still may die, though. Ah, uh, well, that'll help in dodging, at least. Well, she's Cap Boats first stat. Speaking of Cap Snap, there's one other thing I didn't mention. Well, I kind of did, but I didn't get into detail with it. In the training arena, I should probably mention this later, actually. But, um, anyway, I may or may not be interrupted here. Basically, training arena, um, I told you about the stat gains being sort of fixed. 
in that they add up uh, all your growths and for every 100 points in the total you're guaranteed to get one stat up. Yeah, wow, no criticals. Anyway, um, though it, the stats are only totaled up for those that aren't capped. Uh, and so it means it's kind of like the opposite of Radiant Dawn. In Radiant Dawn, it was beneficial to use the bonus experience fixed level ups when you had capped your stats. In this version, it's beneficial more when you haven't capped your world. And there was the thing, there was the luck there, I said. Wow, she'd have been... She'd have, sorry, Linda being killed by a mage. That would have been embarrassing. But, yep, she survived. And that means we have pretty much won this, which is... Again, luck played no small role in that outcome, so I apologise. Uh, I probably wasn't playing that well here, but still. It was good to know that, you know, the RNG took pity on me there. I guess it doesn't really hate me after all. Um, now this bishop needs to go down now. He's not getting another shot at Linda, or anyone for that matter. And, oh, not quite. Hey, you can use Killer Lancers now, that's cool. Uh, and I don't want to waste any good time, so Thunder Time. He is gone. Uh, right, now if I believe there's only one more left, and Marth can just... This was the problem here, right. Marth leaves this guy on 1 HP, and he didn't crit. Now next turn, Marth is gonna die. I was really panicking here until I realised, Ryan to the rescue! If Ryan was not there, hell, if Ryan was even one space back than he was, I would have had to restart that. I was this close to having Marth die there, all because he was just one HP short of killing. Speaking of killing, here's a guy who certainly needs killing. Yep, here's Lang. And wow, we can really abuse the Wing Spears' um, effectiveness against armors, but I don't want to weather more than one attack. Fortunately, all Lang has is a javelin, and we know we all know javelins suck, right? Um, so Lang isn't too tough to take down, really. I mean, you've got a, a, a lot of armor slang weapons anyway. Armor slang weapons, magic, you know. Actually, he's not too bad. Just beware of the fact that he'll always be able to counter you. Albeit, pathetic thing is that javelin. Uh, and he's trying to pull the whole I surrender suckers routine. Oh, I'm sorry, the Emperor ordered me to. I had no choice. Oh yes, that's the reason you ordered to have all those villagers slaughtered and kidnapped all those girls and that kind of thing. Oh, I'm sorry, no, we're not. We're not fooled for a moment, given that this is a battle post. Yeah. We're not fooled. Right, Lang, time to end your miserable... Damn it! Well, he's gonna be a bit tougher than I thought. Okay, Ogma certainly has enough HP to do this. Right, um... Let's see if we can get some revenge from for Lauren, shall we? Damn it! Wow, he really does not want to die here. But it looks like, yep, no, he's not going to survive against this. Time to finish this, Sheeta. Never expected Sheeta would be the one to take him down, but yeah. And, um, <laughs> he died as he lived, a generic villain. Seriously, could they make have made his death quote any more generic? Anyway, good riddance, Lang. You will not be missed at all. And this chapter will not be missed at all. We'll waste no time seizing this point. And, hey, look, it's Wendell. And this music. This music is one of my favourite tracks in the entire Fire Emblem series. It's called Towards Victory. It existed in the original Mystery of the Emblem, but they actually expanded on the track here in this one. And it is amazing. Oh, I love this music so much. It's, again, one of my favourite tracks in the series. Might well be, in fact, I would go so far as to call it possibly the best victory theme ever. Yes, it's the most victoryful song in existence. It's, yeah, that amazing. But, Wendell's got some important information for us. Finally, we get to know what those star shards we got were. Yes, they are pieces of the star sphere. Uh, for some reason, when the Star Seer was used to make Starlight in the last game, it got shattered. And if any one of the five spheres is lost, the world will fall into ruin. That is bad. I'm gonna have to explain about this a bit in more detail. 
those Star Sphere Shards we've been collecting, they're important. Really important. And that's why I stressed their importance earlier. And apparently Wendell is going to join us, and oh great, I'm going to have to give him a um, character thing, aren't I? Damn it. Uh, okay, I'll be back for that then. Um, yeah. Although, first he wants us to stop by the Fane of Ramen. Um, yep, uh, well we found the orbs there originally, so maybe we might find some shards there. And we need the shards, trust me. But first... Oh boy, it is really saying something that I actually forgot I had to give this guy a character rating. Oh, I'm not looking forward to this. Okay, yeah, so Wendell. Yeah, okay, let's just, um, cut to the chase here. Wendell, crappy premium mode, but at least he has healing utility. That's basically it. I should probably explain now just why creep modes tend to suck in this game. In this game, creep modes generally have pretty good growth rates, as you saw with Sirius. Um, again, Aaron was the exception rather than the rule. Wendell's growths aren't great, I'll be honest though. Um, although his luck is high, uh, and his skill's alright. I mean, actually Wendell's growths aren't all that great, so Wendell's probably another exception to the rule. But anyway. The real reason pre-promotes in general, apart from Sirius who is amazing, and with some other exceptions we'll be seeing later, but the reason pre-promotes usually suck in this game is not because of growths. In fact, most of them have better growths than unpromoted characters. No, the real reason they suck is because most of them have absolutely awful bases by the standards of their level. And you can see here with Wendell, his base stats, just look at him, He's almost halfway through his promoted levels, and he's got bases like that. That is just appalling. You might notice that even though he has a good luck growth rate, the base is so low and he's got so low levels to make use of that, then that his average is terrible anyway. So even his good growths are kind of wasted because the base stats are so awful. I'm guessing, yeah, most of the pre promotes have not changed since the original mystery in terms of their stats, and back then, everything capped at 20. So for some of the pre promotes, their bases were actually pretty good by the standards of that game. Now that stats no longer cap at 20, you can expect an unpromoted unit to have stats above 20, definitely at level 7 promoted, and because of that, hmm. Pre promotes like Wendell, their bases have really suffered. Their bases are starting to look really, really awful. So, and yet, then again, though, it's not all bad news for Wendell. He does at least have healing utility, and that's something that, you know, not all pre promotes have going for them. So, he can heal. So, essentially, he's kind of like the healing equivalent of a Jigen. If you need an extra healer who I guess can attack too, though very, very, very badly. Um, you could use him for a little bit if you want, but yeah, I mean, he's got that utility on his side, but apart from that, he's pretty crap. But that's more to do with his bases rather than growths, and as you'll see, that's a recurring theme for pre promotes. That and low playtime. Still, the advice he gave us, now that's more interesting. Lord Goteau has entrusted Wendell with a mission. A mission so vital the fate of the world depends on it. A mission that is now ours. This mission is to recover the 12 Star Sphere Shards. Now, I know the video is already long as it is, but sit through this. This is very important. I'm going to need to talk about this in detail. We already have some of the Star Sphere Shards, but it's not until now that we realise their, their importance. Unfortunately, this very chapter is the first one that features Star Sphere Shards that you can miss. Remember what I said before about wanting to open the chest in this chapter? One of them contained the Libra Shard. If you finish this chapter without opening that chest, the Libra Shard is lost forever, and that means you will not be repairing the Star Sphere. Yes, miss even one of those shards. And, well, okay, I don't want to give too many spoilers, but I'll tell you this. 
in order to reach the true ending of this game, you need to have all five of the spheres intact. This means finding all twelve star sphere shards. If you miss even one of the star sphere shards, you get the quote unquote bad ending. No, it's not quite as awful as you're probably thinking. The world doesn't end or anything. But the game certainly does end earlier than normal. If you don't have all the Star Sphere Shards by a certain point, the game will end at Chapter 20 of 24. Yes, this means you'll miss out on four whole chapters, and that's not good. This will also be the case if you miss one of the other four orbs, but that's less, um, that's more for later. So, it's absolutely vital that you find all the Star Sphere Shards. Starting with this chapter, you can miss them. So from now on, every time we find a Star Sphere Shard, and we'll keep finding more of them as the game progresses, I'll give you a recap on the ones we found in the chapter. At this point, I'm going to give you a recap on all the shards we've found so far. So, what's of a certain nefarious supervillain, initiate super wavy flashback effects. The first shard we received, Taurus, was back in Chapter 3. It was held by Rook, the leader of the Maidonian rebels and boss of the chapter. Killing him, as usual, and he drops his Star Sphere Shard. Now, you don't need to worry about this one. Seeing as it's dropped by a compulsory boss, there's no way you can miss it. You will always pick this one up, no matter what. So, again, you don't have to worry about this one. You will always get it. The next Shard we received, we received back in the previous chapter, Chapter 5. Once again, this one was held by the boss of the map, in this case, Toras the Ballistician. He held the Gemini Shard, and upon killing him, naturally, he drops it. Now, just like the one back in Chapter 3, because this one is dropped by a compulsory boss who's standing on a steam point, there's no way you can miss it. You don't need to worry, you will always get this one no matter what. It's starting with the next chapter that things get a little tricky. The Libra Shard is in the rightmost chest in the middle room on the right hand side of the castle in Chapter 6. This one is the very first shard in the game that is missable, so be sure to get this chest with either Marth or a Thief, because you do not want to miss this one as I said. Again, I can't stress this enough, this is the first shard you can actually miss, so be sure you don't. Next shard, Aquarius, is somewhat interesting in that it's in the possession of a recruitable character, and we'll be seeing more of these in the future. Basically, recruit Santo and he comes with the Aquarius shard, but as you saw, if you somehow accidentally killed him, he will still drop the, sh the shard. Technically speaking, this shard still is visible. If you somehow manage to complete this chapter without recruiting or killing him, but seeing as there's almost no way you'll be doing that without intentionally trying, it's pretty much unmissable, so I'll just treat it as such. Fortunately, the third shard in this chapter, Cancer, is one you definitely can't miss. It's in the possession of Lang, and of course, you've got to take the bastard down to complete the chapter. So you'll be getting this one no matter what you do. Am I the only one who thinks the phrase obtained cancer sounds kind of disturbing? 5 out of 12. There are 7 Star Sphere Shards to go, and we'll be finding the rest in later chapters. But until then, remember you should have 5 by now. That out of the way, time to get back to the victory celebration. Ding dong, the bastard is dead. Finally, we're free of his tyranny. The people of Bruce can live in peace, and we can proceed on to our tier. Oh, and here's a um interesting conversation. This one was not the original. This is new. So basically, yeah, Mark here comments on how many characters you've lost. 
um, if you had, um, but fortunately I got the one where, um, no characters died. Uh, and I'll just have to stop, wait a minute, and talk about, before we get to the Fate of Ramen, we've got a side quest to do. Um, it seems like we're about to be ambushed by mercenaries. To get this side quest, you need to complete this chapter in either 20 turns on normal, 24 on hard, 28 on maniac, 32 on lunatic, or 36 on lunatic reverse. Failing that, the, the extra condition is Ricard must be recruited and aligned. If you're playing casual mode, it doesn't matter if he was killed and retreated. So, I've naturally satisfied those conditions, so it's on to Chapter 6X. This one is somewhat more interesting than the other side quests.